Welcome to our Insteon troubleshooting course. The next thing you're going to see is a video that I took when I was in Brazil. Now this was a project that had a lot of noise on the power line that was created by some LED drivers. They called them Dragon Eyes. They're very small, focused LED lights, but the drivers were putting out a lot of noise on the power line. Now this was causing the installation to have some marginal results at times when you would push a button to turn on a bunch of lights. Sometimes they'd all go on, but then a few of them didn't go off, and it was related to the high level of noise that was created. Now, for quite a while, they worked on trying to figure out where the noise was coming from, and I ended up going out there to help them with this project. Now, what the video is going to show is how we used the diagnostic keypad. We linked it to some various switches around the house, the ones that they were having some trouble with. We took the keypad back then to where our central controller would have been plugged in, and we hit the distance button. Now, the keypad uh, has the ability to do many things. The distance button will send a continuous ping um, about, I don't know, a second apart, half a second apart, but it, you basically should hear it go beep, 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 when things are communicating well. When you hear beep, beep, and then it buzzes, the buzzing is kind of an error condition, and the device isn't responding back reliably. So you'll hear in the video very clearly how we'll go through and shut off breakers one at a time and turn them back on again until the beeping goes back to a steady cadence. Then we look at, well, what was on that breaker and narrow it down and start disconnecting loads until we can figure out what exactly was causing the problem. Now, in this case, we uncovered it pretty quickly and we were able to solve it. So go ahead and uh, go to the next page. You'll watch the video and we'll have some other follow-up material and some testing. Okay, here's an example of a panel that has noise. I'm at a project right now in Brazil, but the electrical panel is similar to what you might find anywhere, except this happens to be three-phase. So I've got the Instian Diagnostic Tester that I've connected to it. I'm getting nothing but error conditions. What I've done is I've linked this keypad using the on-off button. I press and held the set button, and I linked it to a device in the house. Now I've got the distance button pressed, and it should be sending commands to it and it should be responding back. It should be a continuous beep. Instead, I'm getting these error conditions. I need to find out what's controlling that noise. So the trick is just go in and shut off a breaker or two in the panel and see if I can get it to stop. Now, let's try this one. It looks like we're on to something. So that made it better. There's no more error conditions, and you can see that it's communicating pretty well. Sometimes when you turn off a load too, it takes a little bit of time for whatever that stored up capacitor charge was in a driver to dissipate, but now you can see it's consistently communicating uh, without issue. Now I'm gonna go and try to find out what's on that breaker and I'm gonna filter it by either, in, either plugging in a filter device, um, a filter link, or if it's a wired in device, uh, I can put a capacitor across the neutral and the load of whatever device it is, if it's an instant switch or whatever. In most cases, something like a 480K, 400-volt uh, capacitor will do the trick. So, anyway, I hope this video helped. Diagnostic keypad used to do signal-to-noise testing in a panel. Let's quickly talk about the diagnostic keypad now that you've watched the video. Upper left hand corner, this is where you would tap that button where it says on off toggle. You'll follow it by holding the set button in for three seconds and link it to a problem device. If that problem device is too far away or because of the noise you can't link it, move the keypad closer and link it and then go put it back. Now you're, you're looking to see if you have noise throughout the distance of your house. So put it the opposite end of the house to wherever your problem is and then you're going to hit that distance button and then it's going to then send out the ping. Now before we get into that I want to go over the other functions. Beeping it allows you to tap that button and your device will beep. Um, if it's close by, if it doesn't beep, then uh, you're out of range or the noise is affecting it. Report, if you have that on, every time that device turns on you're going to hear a, a buzz coming back from the keypad itself. Traffic is something that you can do by just pushing the button so it lights up 
and just have it plugged in and watch the light on it and see if it starts flashing crazy. If it does, it's seeing traffic. If there's no Insteon commands happening, then there's more than likely noise that's in that 130 kilohertz range. Distance is what we talked about in the video. When I push that, the device repeatedly then beeps. And uh, if it's working well, it's when it doesn't. This is where you go to your breaker panel and turn off breakers one at a time, turn them back on, turn the next one off, back on, until the beeping goes consistent. Once it does, now you know the source of your problem. You can look at the outlets that are being controlled by that breaker, unplug the devices from the outlets, turn the breaker back on, and then introduce the loads one at a time until the beeping um, becomes sporadic again. That device is the one you're going to want to put a filter link on. Insteon sells a device that you can plug into the bottom and then plug it into your outlet, and that'll filter it out. Lock and unlock. This is something where, let's say you've got two kids. One of them is always linking his switch or keypad in his room to his sister or brothers and turning their light on and off. You simply can program their switch and link it to here, then hit the lock and unlock function and lock programming on their device. Relink and unlink. Unlink is once you've linked it and you're all done, you can press unlink and you've pulled the link out of the device and now you don't need to go back and actually unlink it. Relink is if you still want to do testing and you had unlinked it, you can put it back in again. Now, quickly, I'm just going to end with telling you the process of what you would do when it comes to the diagnostic keypad and setting it up. You're going to want to plug it in the wall. You're going to want to link your problem device to it. You're going to want to then hit the distance button. You're then going to listen for noise. And noise is going to manifest itself by either uh, constant, consistent beeps, which means that it's good and there's no noise or very little, or you're going to get a lot of buzzing and inconsistent beeps, and maybe in some cases no beeps at all. And that means that the device doesn't even, it can't even respond back to the keypad. The next step, when you hear that, when you hear the inconsistent beeps and the buzzing, you're going to then turn off breakers one at a time, turn them back on again until the buzzing goes back to being, uh, or the buzzing stops, but the, the beeps go to a consistent um, standard rate, just like you saw in the video. So that's the process. Once you've done it, you've uncovered the breaker, you go to your individual loads then, and you isolate which load was causing the problem by turning the breaker back on and plugging those loads in one at a time until the problem comes back. That's how to use the Insteon Diagnostic Keypad.
I just want to thank you for attending our Insteon troubleshooting session and taking the quiz here at the end. The diagnostic keypad is a great tool for uncovering noise. We're going to do other trainings in the troubleshooting arena where we'll use the ISY's event viewer as a troubleshooting tool, so stay tuned for those.